why this plan just doesn't work. So take a minute to kind of tune into your own guidance system and think about times in your life where you had a lot of discipline, you disciplined yourself to achieve something or to get something and all of the processes that went through your head during that. So like working hard, pushing through it, making it happen, um, the struggle or feeling like this is difficult or getting frustrated with yourself, all these feelings that come with disciplining yourself. How did that process go for you? So if you even like, if you just think of an example or if you write it down, whatever works for you, if you're able to uh, see that early on before the whole presentation or whatnot, then you can really dissect where discipline hasn't been working for you and you've been trying it. So it's it's really awesome timing for you to even just think of an example of something that you've been trying in your life. So then you can hopefully walk away from if it's a huge breakthrough or if it's just an idea that's going to start a huge breakthrough, right? The, the big um, massive thing that we want to be able to bring to anybody today is literally motivation. If you can gain motivation from even just the slightest amount of motivation, atomic habits, right? It's it's real estate, so we all know atomic habits, right? Yeah, 1%. Like, if you just get 1%, half a percent, frick yeah, let's celebrate, right? Okay, cool. So um, try to think of, of, of that area. Discipline not necessarily working for you. Um, you've been trying and trying and trying but you're still feeling like you're in that same pattern. So it could be food. It could be totally. um, working out. Yeah. It could be business. Mm -hmm. yep. um, it could be bit, being a better parent. Yep. So many. Okay. okay. That's great. That's good. To or maybe even those. like you've disciplined yourself and you did get the result that you wanted. But when that result came, maybe it wasn't as fulfilling because you had done all this, this work and it was hard. And so how motivating is that going to be to do it again? Because the process of it wasn't exciting or it wasn't fun. It was maybe even painful to get that thing in the future. And so a lot of times we think if we can just, you know, discipline ourselves and beat ourselves up about not accomplishing things or not doing it right. Or, um, you know, a lot of times when we get frustrated ourselves, we're like, oh, we're so stupid. We think by saying that we're stupid, it's going to motivate us to not be stupid in the future. <laughs> but we're going to talk about how and why that doesn't work. And so discover which debilitating mental or which debilitating patterns might be holding you back from thriving. So just like we were talking with Lynn earlier is um, being able to be aware and analyze and see which patterns or which ways of thinking are holding you back. And a discipline can be a major part of that. I love the idea if you're disciplining all the time, are you thriving? <laughs> I love that connection. Mm -hmm. okay, good. So fulfill life yourself. Everything that we talk about is completely surrounded by your own capability of being able to figure out what's going on inside of you. In the mainstream society and culture and how the world teaches us is that we need something else to fix us. We need medication or we need to go to therapy or we need to exercise. Like all these external things can definitely have an impact on fixing ourselves. But if we can go from the inside out to fix what's going on, it's going to be so much more beneficial to our lives. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I love this because we just break free. We break free from, from whatever debilitating thought or pattern that we might have. And this is anything. When I say debilitating pattern and, and we bring up mental illness or, or any of these words, I just want to say that anything that we talk about it is just anything that, that brings uncomfort. Like you, you're uncomfortable. Because any level of pain is enough to be able to make shifts in life. Because biggest motivation in life typically is pain, <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah. And a debilitating pattern can be a belief system based on negative experiences you've been through. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll go into that because a lot of it ties in with how our brains are wired. Right, and how we see like your the, the idea of perspective. I love this. You bring up perspective, and it's like mm -hmm. it is the golden nugget for the whole presentation is the understanding of perception. Because how we are wired is how we think, is how we see, and then how we see is our reality. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want I want to take a minute and write down some things that you feel like you have to discipline yourself to do. 
So then as we go throughout the presentation, you can reflect on those things and apply it to what we're talking about. So I like some of the things we're saying, like just kind of yourself to exercise or to eat the things that you want to eat. Um, just nice to work out all the time. And now like, I'm just like, how about no scrolling? That's a big one. Not scrolling. Oh, you yeah. have social media. So those are, I mean, these are different things, yeah. but they're, they are very debilitating. Scrolling, <laughs> I, I have a timer on my phone. I can only scroll for this much time. And it's like, that discipline's not working. Good job. But then I start thinking like, oh, uh, um, I only can scroll this much time in today. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, well, I want to make sure I scroll that <laughs> much time. Right? And it just totally backfires. Like that discipline is not rewiring me. No. So it's interesting because I, uh, I I know you guys are writing, so keep writing. But this idea of, of not putting a timer on my social media is typically allowing me to not scroll because I don't feel like there's this confinement in these walls and and it's like me choosing it instead. Well, like, how is scrolling like serving you? That's what I yeah. will say to myself. It's like, how is this serving me? Because it's almost like you need a break from something. So then you start just scrolling. I'm like, mm -hmm. but what? Nothing yeah. in here is motivating me. Why am I doing it? Oh, yeah. The yeah. challenge of fulfillment, wanting to escape. Yeah. Yeah. So, a little bit about us while, while you guys continue to write, I want to tell our story and how we came to um, understanding these concepts on a deeper level and, and building this company to help other people break out of these debilitating patterns. So, this is my dad, Lamont. <clears throat> Him and I, we, in our family, we had some major intense struggles like to the point of suicidal ideations and panic attacks and um anxiety depression you know pretty complex personality disorders within our family and so because of that pain pain can be a wonderful gift and what did it give us it gave us the motivation to figure it out because we were trying all sorts of mainstream therapies and medications diets um, energy work, all sorts of modalities. And it didn't seem like we were getting the shift that we wanted. And it was almost like we were losing hope in this way of um, like our perspective at the time was if you have a disorder, then you can't change it. That this disorder is a literal chemical imbalance in the brain and there's nothing that you can do about it. And so imagine leading a life with that perspective, that idea that all this pain that was going on within our family we were just stuck with, and that's just how it was. And a lot of the people and the programs of the world is teaching that, that this is a disorder, this is a disability that you can't change, you're just gonna have to cope with and deal with this for the rest of your life. And we were hearing this over and over, and it was really uh, enhancing that pain <laughs> that we were already dealing with, that idea that there was nothing that you can do about it. And so because of all this struggle, it really motivated us to figure it out. So my dad, he actually quit his job and he started incessantly researching all of the new neuroscience and psychology coming out. And at one point we actually calculated that um, over 500 pages a day comes out of new neuroscience. And so there's a, there's a major disconnect in society of being able to get this information out to the world because it takes 20 to 40 years for this information to get into the schools. And so people who are really trying to figure out psychology and the mental side of it, we're using a lot of outdated modalities and outdated information to solve it. So someone who got their degree a year ago even could be completely outdated because of how much we're researching and coming to understand the brain. And so by discovering this and you know, realizing that, you know, those modalities and those things weren't working, my dad grabbed all these different bits and pieces of research and put it all together and created a flying model. And so this model, he was invited to open up an office in the neuro clinic. And at the neuro clinic, they treated, they treated brain injuries. And what they were actually finding was a lot of people were coming into the clinic for mental struggles. So they did um, TMS, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation to stimulate the brain and reactivate those um, areas that had been shut off because of these injuries. And they actually saw that through patterns of mental struggles, 
we ourselves actually disconnect and shut off those areas in the brain. And so they were realizing like, well, like this is a major, this is having a major influence on people with mental struggles. And so we met with all the patients there at the neuro clinic and we worked with people struggling with schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, disassociative disorders, like pretty extreme mental struggles. And we had an amazing success helping people. He actually could measure, um, Dr. Oliver, who worked there, works there still. Um, and this is just in Lehigh. Um, he measured that we had a 97% success rate with wow. people with these intense mental struggles. And so this was super motivating to us, almost like we were kind of freaking out because we're like, okay. everybody needs us. <laughs> like we got to this to the whole world, you know, because of how much it was changing people's lives. And so we were meeting at the time, we're meeting with one-on-one -on -one and, you know, for about five to 10 hours sometimes. And we're like, well, if we could, you know, meet with one person right now and completely shift and help them make these shifts, why not meet with 50 people at the same time? So that's what motivated us to create Fulfill Life Yourself, to do group sessions and digital programs and more extensive things to really help people shift and change. And through, through the FLY model, I was able to work through my own debilitating patterns. I actually had like a ton of fears and um, perspectives that were debilitating me in, you know, being able to date and meet somebody. And because I was able to overcome all that, I was able to meet Austin and get married. The hunk of her life. <laughs> <laughs> really handsome power. <laughs> and so then he hopped on board and and so now we all work together in in making helping people see these patterns and making that major shift so things people ask is well how come like such high success rates happened like what what is it what's that secret sauce um and what is it you do and all that right uh one it, it's a three month long program anyways uh, that's like we're going to be able to give something where you can gain some motivation from it um i like the analogy of has any of have any of you studied something out where you really want to learn it and then you're with somebody that's like smarter and then is always telling the answer and then you don't ever get to process and figure out the answer for yourself and whatnot mm -hmm. so it, it's a way of, of using that analogy to explain like it, it, you're not going to walk away understanding the whole system because it would be taking away that whole journey from you. And that journey is literally the process of being able to remap and rewire your brain, right? So the secret sauce is two things, I like to say. And what Lamont and Mikkel were doing is they took in all of these modalities and they challenged all of them that they, that they saw. Why didn't it work? And they really questioned that. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? And then they started realizing more and more. And one of the big things they started realizing is the understanding of individuals not relying on anything or anyone else. No um, drug, no device, no person, nothing else other than yourself. Neuroplasticity will go into that, but the ability to actually rewire your brain only can exist if you're choosing into it, right? So then people being able to push their envelope and push their limit to where they know it is, is literally the secret sauce. You guys doing it yourself. And I love this idea of secret sauce because it's not about the food that tastes good. Like you put sauce on anything, the sauce is gonna change the whole flavor of the meal, right? So secret sauce, what is your secret sauce? Um, so when I came into it, um, I understood things when it came to fly. Uh, what what attracted me to to each other is through life, I've learned a lot of principles that are taught, as well as all of you have too. We all have learned the model in some degree in some aspect of our life, right? So then Mikkel and I were really attracted to each other because we spoke similar languages and whatnot, and similar thought processes. Uh, the cool part about being able to unwire and, and unfold all of this in, in the way you think is you have a lot of these aspects on, on what is beneficial for you in the areas that are working. And then the areas that aren't working, we haven't really pulled in what works over here to over there in this other aspect of life, right? So that's, that's where a lot of these breakthroughs come from. So a lot of these things that you might hear, you're like, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, okay, this makes sense. Okay, like this isn't anything new. Well, it's not in those areas that you know them. Now apply them in areas that 
they're not being applied. <laughs> but also it's, you know, grabbing these bits and pieces of things that you already know and putting it into a language or into a model where it's all like written out for you. Because in his situation, he understood a lot of these concepts, but he didn't understand on conscious level to where he could re-explain it to somebody else. It's like, well, I just did it. Like, you just do it. You just don't have depression. And it's like, yeah. he wasn't able to explain what was actually going on within him. I want to engage the room on this. So raise, raise your hand if you've ever been like, uh, somebody, you know, comes up with, with a situation that you just really don't understand. And you just are like, I don't know how to, you know, to give them the advice that would really work for them. Like, has anybody been in that situation? Yeah. Majority of the time, right? Like for, for my understanding, majority of the time, that's how my old self was. And a big one was depression. I was like, well, I'm a really happy individual. Just don't be sad, right? It's like, it's in a lot of areas, it's not that simple. But yeah, you know, to bring in that language to understand what is happening inside of our brain on a neurological level can then give that data and that understanding and that analytics to then help individuals see what might be happening in, in between their ears. And that's why we call it the flying model, because it's a model that you can replicate over and over. So if you have the model of success and you're not successful in this area, you can just apply that same model to the area that you're not successful. So it's a tool that you can use constantly. And that's why it works in every area of your life, because it's not the specifics of step one, step two, step three in this area. It's you just apply the model in that area and figure it out. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into that, but kind of the basics of how our um, brain is structured is as we go throughout life, we take in beliefs and perceptions from our environment, right? So even, you know, as a child, before your brain is fully developed, you're soaking in like a sponge, all these ways of thinking and a massive part of that and um, a massive um, influence that we have is technology, right? Mm -hmm. So literally the name of TV is TV programs, right? So these programs or these belief systems and ways of thinking are influencing our own belief system. And so as you are experiencing these programs that are happening to you, right? Because it's just your environment, you didn't actually get to choose which programs you get to use to think and process and perceive life. And so we all just have these programs. A lot of these programs aren't serving us. Like they're creating these debilitating patterns or these mental struggles, but a lot of them are. And so it's about determining which ones aren't serving you and shifting those to where they do serve you. And so by being able to program yourself, that's how you'll be able to live the life that you want to live and perceive the things that you want to perceive because you're in control over it rather than, you know, living in like a micro trance is what we call it is we're kind of living like a robot because we didn't choose these programs. We're just going throughout life thinking the way that we think, even though it could be totally recognized inside. Are we in a world where we can totally live outside of technology? Well, I want to say we are, right? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is it likely that we will totally not be influenced by technology? <laughs> like technology is increasing and skyrocketing exponentially, right? So if, if we understand that and we believe it, then we also understand that technology is going to program us if we allow it to. So we want to be able to be in charge of what programs us. And it goes literally to the subconscious because when you start thinking about it and you're scrolling on social media, right? Or you're watching your television show or, um, the commercial, we love the idea of, of uh, hey, weight loss, get skinny, get fit, and blah, blah, blah. And then even though you're like, I don't need to be skinny to be beautiful, you're consciously thinking that, but what does your subconscious see? What does your subconscious believe, right? So try, let's just, let's brainstorm a little bit. What are some of these other things, are these other programs that we might not consciously really like believe but subconsciously we're probably believing something okay. any ideas i can tell you what my thoughts are let's go yeah, what yeah. you're saying i was just thinking can you subconsciously be drawn to a tv show mm -hmm. that reinforces a limiting belief you already have <laughs> and then it just kind of continues and then 
I'm just like I'm just living in that world. All right. Oh, oh, my. Wow. Okay. Great. Yes. Yeah. 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 How they're treating each other in the movie. Like we think, oh, that's how life is. Like, for example, movies like they totally romanticize um, relationships. I watch right? this criminal show, so it's <laughs> like <laughs> I've had experiences like and traumas to certain things, and part of me just like, well, no, that's not everyone. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, you're just making me think. I'm like, oh, I'm watching this show and I watch it every day. Mm -hmm. Does it reinforce this belief that I've had about? Yeah. Question wow. now. Question. I did. I'm watching it right now. Yeah. Boy, maybe yes. I should watch it without <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe That's watch cool. it with different eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, take that. Like, that is so amazing. Take that and then think about it the rest of the day. Okay, just really drive that one in because yeah. we want you to question some of your routines that you're doing. I mean, it's one right. thing to have, go through situations and traumas and you have that. I've always been a really positive person. Mm -hmm. I've just kind of had to pull back from certain types of people mm -hmm. that are hurting me. But then I'm like, okay, well, you've now alienated yourself where you're just alone all the time and you feel great and it's great and maybe it is good on some levels and some levels you just kind of makes you think about it yeah because i've started to branch out to do different things but i you know what i was explaining it before on how that whole aura thing collapsed on itself i was doing for too much for mm -hmm. too many people I and mean, it's even your yeah. own family and then you have to make them accountable. Mm -hmm. You need to be accountable for this. You're an adult now. You should be accountable for this, this, and this. I can do this much, but I can't do that. And then watching their reaction, very getting very negative, you're just like, well, okay. You still have to stand your ground for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, we're actually going to dive into that. Really? In oh, the yes. It's <laughs> not a good second. It's, <laughs> it's so small. Is that going to skip the... Yeah, I, okay. I want to hit one thing real quick. Okay, so in terms of like, I really want to um, help individuals see that, help all of you see that, like programs, like we're being programmed so in so many ways, and I'm sure you believe that. But if we give some examples, I think it'll go a little bit deeper, right? So billboards, um, what's on billboards? Like what is being said there? Uh, iPhone versus Android. Would you ever switch from iPhone? Typically not because you don't want that green bubble, right? Or is it the blue one? I forget. I think it's blue one. Yeah, I whatever. think that iPhone and Android should make a baby and they'd be the perfect. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about the 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 bigger the diamond, the more you love her? <laughs> what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, that is a oh, what a beautiful rock. Okay. Um, who wants the latest and greatest phone? What program, like, was that programmed into us? Like, why aren't we using flip phones if, you know, we don't want to text or be on social media? But we're being programmed that social media is something that we want in our life. Like, what other programs are there out there? This is, like, pivotal because if we understand that there's, we are being programmed, then we can choose what we want to be programmed to. This belief that we are being programmed is foundational with being able to make the changes. Okay, now we can move on. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so old science would say, once you have these programs in place, this is what you have to go throughout life with, right? You have, you know, alcoholism is in your DNA, so you're going to have a high chance of being addicted to alcohol. So if you ever try alcohol, you better watch out because you're going to be sick. You know, like stuff like this is, you know, once a smoker, always a smoker. But new neuroscience is showing that through neuroplasticity, and neuroplasticity is the idea that you can actually disconnect from that old habit. So alcoholism, mm -hmm. you can completely disconnect from that pull towards alcohol and reconnect it in a new way where it's solidified to the point that you don't even have any draw towards it. And this is any addiction or any area of life where you have a habit that you want to stop. And so this idea is major because you can have control over it. You can have control over which programs you want to keep connected in your brain and which programs you want to disconnect from. And so how empowering is it that you can change on this deep below? Pretty incredible. And so the FLY model teaches us how to do this. So 
right here, these, these are the axons and dendrites, right, on your neurons. So then the moment these connect, there's a synapse, and that synapse is releasing chemical. Okay, uh, dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin, oxytocin, uh, we've heard a lot of these, okay? So when we understand what's happening on a neurological level inside of our brain and what these patterns are, what these thought processes are, emotions are, patterns, what the wiring is, all of all these are synonyms for this context here. When we understand what's happening neurologically, then we can give it uh, a a language to be able to unravel and unwire. When when the neuroscientists started looking at at these brain scans of an individual with alcoholism and an individual with depression, same brain scan, different individual. <clears throat> what did they notice on a neurological level? The brain is active in similar areas. The brain is needing a chemical re reward in similar areas. What did the neuroscientists then determine that meant about depression? Well, anything is a neurological addiction because depression, alcohol, um, yelling at your kid, or disciplining yourself to be able to get to that next stage, they're all being able, they're all releasing that chemical for us to be able to get an increase and feel like we're getting, we're progressing towards something. And now we're addicted to whatever the chemical need is being met. So every behavior, every single thing that we do is to meet a chemical need. And so these addictions on a subconscious level, if we're getting super angry, we're subconsciously getting these dopamine or serotonin hits from that behavior. Even though on a conscious level, we're like, I don't want to feel angry. Like, this is wrecking my life. This is doing this, this, and this to me. But on a subconscious level, we're like, no, this is rewarding us. And so it's all addictions in the brain. It's super helpful to understand people around you that yeah. are your relatives or, you know, someone that is doing these things. You wonder why are they doing these yeah. behaviors that are yeah. triggering or why do they keep doing things going back to it over and over? Mm -hmm. And once you see that that's how they're fulfilling these things, it's really helpful for you to be able to help them. Yeah. Yes. Or even to even like them. Seriously, though. Yeah, seriously. You start. Um, but uh, will they listen? Will they listen? Yeah. So they, and they have to want to change. We'll ask the question does it matter if they listen? Yes, right. that's the other question. We'll mm -hmm. maybe come up with. Right? Yeah, because it helps um, you, but it's not mm -hmm. all that matters is that it helps you. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, we'll, we'll figure more out about that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, this plays a massive part in parenting and our relationships. So, as our brains are being developed and we're soaking in everything like, like a sponge then we have these programs, this foundational framework, these foundational pr programs that we're going into our life using to communicate and to talk and to, to um, uh, communicate with other people in our relationships. So these patterns are actually being soaked in through frequency. Mm -hmm. So our emotions, happiness, sadness, it's all frequency. And so as you're in the womb, you're taking on these frequencies of the mother, of the environment, and then you're born with these programs already, and then your brain continues to develop and soak more in until about age seven. So you can go throughout life with this structure of programming. And a major influence that we have on each other is what's going on within ourselves, and especially with parents. So children, have you ever seen someone yell at their kid, stop yelling? <laughs> what is that teaching the kid to do? Well, you're telling them to stop yelling, but what is it that you're actually doing? Yeah, you're getting yeah. louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the child is actually learning to yell, even though you're telling them the opposite, to not yell. So children are soaking in what we're doing as parents. How many of you have children? I'm just curious. How many of you have parents? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So... And this isn't just in parenting. This is happening in all of our relationships. So if you're super stressed and anxious, what is that teaching those around you to do or to be super stressed and anxious, right? If you're worrying about your child all the time, what is that teaching them to do? Worry all the time. And so by having these struggles ourselves, 
are actually teaching other people to have those same or similar struggles. Now, if, if we understand that, okay, if we're teaching our kids to be this and worry and all that, um, go back to the last slide real quick. This idea that everything's being passed down um, with epigenetics, that's not necessarily for DNA. For DNA. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's not necessarily true because of this idea of being able to change and, and literally change DNA expression even, right? How empowering is that? You're not just subject to having depression or subject to discipline everything all the time in order to get it done. You're not just out of control. You are in control of everything because we are in charge of what we what we think, how we feel, our frequency that we give up. Because you can literally read the frequency. If you're angry, it has a frequency. Uh, when you're sad, what kind of music do you like listening to? Sad, sad music, mm -hmm. yeah, why? We're matching that frequency. Like uh, back in high school, when I thought my whole life was on the line because I broke up with my girlfriend, right? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, like that was this big thing because it was the biggest event at the, those times. And it's like, well, I was listening to John Mayer, uh, Bon Iver, like all of these like kind of sadder tone songs. And it's because we we match that frequency. So um, we'll ask you for it. Um, so uh, understanding that frequencies don't go... Uh, they go through closed doors. Like, if you're just going to act a certain way, what you're teaching your kid is what? Can you say that again? Yeah, that's it. If, if, um, you're, if you're just acting a certain way, what are you teaching your kids? So just be actors, right? Yeah, to not be authentic. And, like, they're, they're, they know how you're feeling, okay? So then skip um, forward now as we're going to move forward. Cool. Um, so the, this idea of exponential stress, yeah. yeah. Um, when, when we understand exponential stress, uh, if if we're stressed in one area of life and we don't unravel it and figure out like what's stressing us out, typically it stacks on top of the other and then the other and the other. This is, this is what happens: is we feel stress or anxiety or upset about something or you know even just simple feelings like anger. Yeah. So we feel this anger, we get frustrated, and what do we usually do? Or upset or angry. We go watch TV. We go work out. We go work out. <laughs> we go for exercise. Long before I never sleep. Exactly. And then did that actually fix the problem that was stressing you out? Oh, really? It's got to change some chemicals in your body, though, right? Yeah, you have to start to feel better. But you still have. Yeah. Exactly. So you still have that underlying problem, and so this is what creates chronic stress so we're taking is, something external trying to solve something that's really internal yes there. exactly so <laughs> then because we escape through walking tv or exercising it didn't actually fix the problem the stress didn't actually go down it actually went up because we have another thing that's stressful and it builds upon the stress that we have before so our cells are being stressed and stressed and stressed and there's no release so when we're stressed we get here and then we escape and then the stress never left, and then we escape again. And then the stress again, and then we escape. So these flat lines, in a way, is just a, a style of us escaping. So then it stacks on top of each other. And so you get so stressed that all of a sudden you cry over spilled milk. Okay, you're freaking out, or you have a blow up because of all the stress happening. But stress is actually really healthy on the brain. Right? You ever cold, heard of cold showers? purposefully stressing your cells to reduce inflammation. So if we're able to figure out this process and actually reduce that stress in the way of figuring it out and working through it in your head where the problem's actually not there anymore, then we have a healthy stress levels where it goes up and then we fix it, we work through it, it goes back down. And so we can live a life of working through our problems rather than, and this is actually what leads to all mental struggles is this pattern of escaping and not working through our problems. So with this foundational framework, we teach people how to deconstruct those patterns or those programs that aren't serving us. So for example, if this is your foundational framework and these are patterns that are wrecking you and you slowly take those out, then your foundation will crumble, but then you can rebuild it in a way and rebuild programs that do serve you. 
And so that's what we teach. Let's skip this one. Sure, yeah. So we like to talk about this, this in stages. So <clears throat> stage one is pain, right? Yeah, I want to emphasize real, real fast. You don't yeah. this right here. Understanding these stages, okay? I, I just I want to put some weight on this real quick. So the understanding these stages is it's it's the buildup. This is the climax. This is the understanding of what's happening. So everything that we've discussed is to build up to this moment, okay? So I want you guys to really look at this and put some weight on it because understanding what what we will describe here with these stages is what's happening in our daily lives, in our, in our routines over and over and over. And if we can see this, then we're going to be able to use that language and that data to be able to make the shifts that we want. So this is really massive, okay? And as we go throughout this part, you can even take notes of areas where you are in pain, right? Areas where you want to change or you want to... Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Physical pain as well? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Good question. Yes. Yep. So, right. Um, insomnia or seizures, that's a, that's a major physical part that our brain is reacting to what's going on inside, right? We're reacting through that, that seizure or um, panic attacks is on here, but MS. absolutely. MS is very physical too, or it's very neurological. Yeah. So the first stage is pain. And what do we do to get out of that pain? We're trying to find relief. So what are some areas of life where we try to find relief? And just like we talked about before, sometimes these things that we find relief through are actually escapes. So we exercise to escape, we're not actually working through the problem. And so a lot of um, uh, Man, this is a lot of methods <laughs> can get to that place of rewiring, mm -hmm. but if we're using it in a way to escape and not actually fix the problem, <laughs> then those methods aren't going to be as effective getting to that core, getting to that foundational framework to deconstruct it. And so then we get stuck in the cycle of going from pain to relief to pain to relief because all of a sudden we feel better about it, but didn't actually fix it. So then we go back to our old pattern and we replicate what we're doing in our head and we create that chronic stress where we actually induce more pain into our lives. <laughs> And I'm not saying these things aren't effective, right? I, I exercise, I diet, I do a lot of these things up here. But if we're using that to escape and not actually fix the problem, then that's where it's not helpful to us. Hey, tarot readings are on there. Does anybody have examples of some pain that maybe not be up, might not be up here in your life or in somebody's life that you know? Anybody can think of any? That are not on there. Yeah, or maybe that are on there and you resonate with. Like, well, people that have fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Is that? I mean that. There you go. Yeah. Um, God, there's what a it? lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's there's a there's a lot. That that's the point, right? You hit a spot. Um, what about uh, maybe your kids aren't living up to what you want them to live up to? Could that be painful? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's one of the more painful ones from what I hear. Right. Uh, I don't know, but they, um, anything else like. Just to shotgun them some out really fast. Headaches. 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 Yeah, overthinking. Over overthinking. Welcome. <laughs> yes, overthinking. That, yeah, that's a big one. Overwhelming. Okay. I was just going to say headaches. <laughs> okay, go to stage two now. Uh, are there any other um, coping things that we might do? Maybe discipline? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just discipline, right? Mm -hmm. And what other ones? Maybe in your life or your experience. Or like yeah, I love massages. Yeah. And pop tubs is my like, I'm literally just, yeah. It's, it's it's life, great. <laughs> if you really think about what we're talking about, though, a big one that relieves us is scrolling. Yeah. You go to social media scrolling. and you're looking at social media, but it gives you pain because you're comparing yourself to other people. <laughs> uh -huh. But the social media is like, a, I mean, like a lot of these are yeah. definitely things that we can do, but. Yeah. The one that's bad for us that we're getting our relief is is those things, is going and looking at those things. Yeah. So the problem comes in with all of these examples, and there's a ton, right? Oh, man, I just I wish this was a three-hour thing, you know. But um, the problem comes in when we get the relief and we're good, right? A cyclical cycle. That that's what it's called. You get into a cyclical cycle. You go from pain. You get to relief. 
and you go back to pain because you just got You're released. You're describing the cycle of addiction. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and that's what's happening on a neurological level. So that we can get our hits. So you and get our dopamine. Because it's pretty much a drip. And addiction is just a drip line. You're not actually getting So you're saying that your program, program can just relieve that all together? Not our program, but mm -hmm. you using our program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you not relieve it all together. Stage three. It, it's about us ourselves. You can yeah. you can attend what they have and yeah. not get anywhere if your mind is not. Oh, no, for sure. Oh, right. Right. It's not negative. I'm no, just... you did it. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's just a play on words. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you, we, we know what you mean. And the, the way you speak and all of us speak, it's, it's literally society has programmed us to speak certain ways. And that's all it is. Do we have to pick our kids up from school? Or do we want to? <laughs> right? We want to. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this word of need, have to, and all these, like, we can go in depth. But we're all programmed with even how we speak. So how do you know if these things aren't actually changing the core or shifting you at the core? Definitely know yoga is. Yeah. <laughs> well, the yeah. Yeah. These are some questions that you can ask yourself. If the thing that you're feeling like is changing you or shifting you, you can ask to see if it really is getting to that core. So does it rewire you? Does it require someone else? That's the disempowerment test. If you're having to rely on this external thing all the time mm -hmm. to fix whatever's going on, then you're not the person in control. And our brains are so complex. For someone else to tell you what what to do, they they don't know your brain. Yeah. Right. So many modalities are like step one, step two, step three. Or when your kid says this, do this. Or when in a relationship, if they say this to you, then act this way. It's all so complicated, and, and there's so much more to it. But if you're the one who can figure it out and go within your own brain, figure out what's going on within you. Then that's going to be so much more effective than trying to follow someone else or someone else's advice or what they're saying. I'm not saying to not listen to other people, right? But tune into yourself and figure it out. So stage three is transformation. This is going way deeper. It's getting to that core. It's going to the place where you can actually transform the pain to where you see it completely different to where the pain's not there anymore. And that's how you find true healing or true relief because it's solidified it's deeper so this right here this framework and these foundations that Mikkel is talking about tr true transformation and thriving is when this framework of how you think that was debilitating you doesn't exist mm -hmm. you literally have rewired it to be able to be your new self that's true transformation so it's not just coping with and dealing with all these terms that we that we see are being really good it's actually not having them exist so coping with and dealing with and giving relief they are really beautiful they really are beautiful because it gets you to a position to where you you can actually function and then you can keep going forward but just keep going forward right mm -hmm. and in that way you want to go so, so how do you know if you've reached true transformation or shifted that core within you well, you don't have any more impulse or triggers mm -hmm. around that thing that triggered you before because you've transformed it. Or no need for discipline, right? You don't have to push through to make something happen. You're just naturally being pulled towards that thing because you've worked it out in your brain. You don't have that pain that's getting in the way that you feel like you have to discipline yourself through. Which gives you more time this is all to the get those ingrained on your own reality. So, yes. yeah, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if you don't need the discipline, it, it's crazy because time does go so much better because you're not beating yourself up all the time for not doing. It's so hard to explain. Or my because I'm not other people. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's a constant art, though. Yeah. I just feel like you have more. For me, it was always I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I have so much to do. I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. And now it's like if I'm on the right side of of my thinking. Yeah. I have plenty of time and I'm excited because I get to do it <laughs> yes. instead of I have to do it. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, That's it's spot on. Amazing. Oh, yeah. It's cool. So, yeah, we want to give the opportunity to Lynn and Ashley to go ahead and share a little bit about their story because they've been through our program and um, talk about some of the shifts that you guys have made. And then we can wrap up with um, our invite to our events and 
Yeah. I love that trauma becomes strength. That's a big one for a lot of people because there's a lot of people that <laughs> use trauma to keep them back. And once you use trauma to help you become stronger, you're invincible. Yeah. But there's a, a lot of people that use that trauma as a reason why they can't. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Ashley, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Then maybe you can stand up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was the person that my mom was looking to help. Um, so when she met Mattel. She was looking to help somebody, me, <laughs> that was struggling with um, depression and anxiety. And um, I think the biggest thing that this program has given me is just hope that there is another way, that we aren't, we don't have to do life the same way that we've been taught or that we've been programmed, but that we do have control over it and that we can shift it ourselves. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is just the hope and like having the hope. Cause I was at the end of place where I was like, there is no hope. Like I was that low. So that's really the big takeaway for me. Do you want to come up and say? Oh, I, was just, I was just going to say what's really cool too for you is that you can tell when you're in fight or flight mode, which before you would have a panic attack and you would have no idea why and you had no control. Mm -hmm. And now you think things through and you're asking yourself questions why am i feeling like this whereas before it was all happening to you yeah and not that everything's perfect but and we're still working through things but when you can get through that this has given us tools for that 100 do you want to come up and say your experience i think i've already talked with I'm, I'm, I'm going to use an example um, that I don't think I've talked to anyone really about, um, is that in my house, um, weight was a really big thing. You know, my dad made fun of my mom for being overweight. My mom was this incredible woman that accomplished a ton. But in my family, we never knew that because he was always kind of putting her down, making fun of her. Well, when I was about 14, we lived on a lake. He looked at the back of me and, and my dad, I loved him. He was a good man, but he said I was getting hot cheap butt. So I got bulimic and anorexic and I would run around the house. And, you know, I'm when I say run around the house, I would run around the house because I just felt like I could feel fat growing around me. Well, this program that I went into to help my daughter um, ended up helping me to where I don't have the food issues that I had before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I thought about it way more than I ever let on. And um, even though I thought I got over it, you know, but once I met my husband, I stopped being bulimic when I met Jeff, which was 34 years ago. I still always, and my kids are, are testament to this, and I didn't even know I did it. I never ever told my children that they were overweight or they needed to lose weight, but I always talked about myself, always. Mm -hmm. And I, I can look back at pictures and my husband would always say, he'd go, he'd go, then you're gonna look back at a picture and you're gonna say, I looked really good, but yet I never saw myself as looking good. And I look at how I feel today and I'm thinner now because I don't have all of these thoughts about weight or food, I'm just living. So the other day, she Janet brought some delicious rolls, right? And they were so yummy. And I was actually enjoying it thinking, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. And I was just enjoying it. And my mom was with me and my mom kept saying like over and over, we shouldn't be eating this. We shouldn't be having this. Oh, we're just going across the line by eating this. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking at her because of the changes I've had in my head. Why do we have to say these things? Why do we have to put ourselves down for enjoying something? Because it didn't make me fatter. In the past, I would have, you know, I would have been feeling guilty the whole time. We had to hide what we ate or what we in front of us. So anyway, our brains are super powerful. And just me not thinking about it, I've lost weight. <laughs> you know? I, so anyway, that's <laughs> So super massive shifts here. Yeah. And it's so amazing. Like, um, we're always going to have patterns that we can work through. Right. So this isn't like 
oh, you're going to be perfect in all areas of your life forever. But no, you will know how to figure it out. And that's what gives you hope. So if anything, you know, even if you don't come to our event or don't do any of our programs or anything, at least feel that hope that you can shift and change and keep searching until you find it. Yeah. And I know we have four minutes left, but I would feel um, kind of rough if I didn't even bring it up. So this idea of, of hope and being able to bring motivation, like my passion, like my passion shifted six months ago when I got a phone call to say, hey, come come sit down and, and let's, uh, you know, I want to tell you something in person and whatnot. And my brother called me and I came to his house and I sat down and and it was just it was six months ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, about six months ago. So six months ago, I found out that my big brother took his life, right? And uh, his name's Devin. And you'll see why uh, we have a coupon code with his name, Devin. And the reason I bring this up, it's not to, you know, get like hugs and all that from, from all you, which I appreciate. They're all, they're all welcome. They're all wonderful, okay? Um, but I bring it up because uh, Devin was probably, I don't know, but Devin was in a situation where he was in that cyclical cycle, where he was going to the point where he was getting relief and then going back and getting relief and going back. And then what's the point of life if I'm just going to keep going back, right? So we're doing the same thing as, as he might have been doing. We, we all are Devin in so many ways. So I, I, I love this idea of, of hope because what we what we want you to have is hope and i want to be able to share Devin's story as much as i can because he might not have felt like he had a voice and his story his moment is turning into a movement where he's actually changing and saving lives himself because who wants to just survive and who wants to thrive where are you just surviving in life why would you want to just keep surviving like if you're just on, if you're only surviving, you don't want to keep waking up the next day if you're just surviving. So let's live, let's thrive. Let's like, um, if you walk away today, like, like, uh, I forget your name, but crazy, crazy. Okay. You brought up this idea of like, am I watching this TV show or, or whatever that is? Mm-hmm. Like, um, take that with you. Like literally take that, keep it in your pocket for like a week and just like, I, I say that because I literally have Devin's rock where I'm like, let's go, Devin. Like, you're with me, you know? Because, guys, hope is, is what I want everyone to have, is what we want everybody to have. So please just take, like, a huge amount of hope. Not not just a grain of salt, but, like, a huge amount of hope, um, which jumps into our our, uh, our invitation that we have here. Yeah, so we found an amazing way to help people make massive shifts and transform. And there's definitely other ways to do it. But this is what we have to offer. And so we're doing what's called a learn to fly event where we go deeper into these concepts and we actually go through, we walk you through a process of helping you discover those debilitating patterns and then help you see why they're not serving you in your life. And that's on May 4th at 10 a.m. in Sandy. And then right after, we're actually having a fly barbecue. So everyone who's been through our program, we're all getting together and we're doing this big potluck and so you can also come to that afterwards as well. Yeah. And if you're not able to make it on May 4th at 10 a.m., then you can watch a webinar or a recording of that presentation. And then we're having a Zoom group discussion where we can help answer any questions that you might have about watching it. So we're really excited to offer this because this will go deeper into our programs to help you get a deeper understanding and see if it's something that you want to move forward with. The yeah. um if, if it's not your cup of tea, sweet, you're that, you're one step closer to finding out what is your cup of tea, okay? <laughs> if it is your cup of tea, whoa, let's go. Like, that is really cool. Uh, if you, if coming to the event on May 4th live, if that's just too far away because you're like, you know, I want to, like, my, my momentum is now, but typically it's a little bit more difficult to be able to gain momentum. And then once momentum is gained, then all of a sudden it's, you know, you're going and, and you're, you're, you're at the gym every single day now, right? But to be able to get to the gym that first week is a little bit more difficult. If you feel like you have momentum right now, then watch, just watch the digital. Just, you know, watch it. It's two hours long. Watch it. That's um, the digital's on May 2nd? 
Uh, yeah. yeah, so we will, yeah. you could jump in and, and do like so a- So we'll send zoom. you the digital recording of the event. And then you oh, can come to you this. Watch it. I have yeah. signs on that day right at yeah. time, so hey. I don't have to see the digital. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, you, you can uh, scan this or you can just talk to us and we'll, we'll give you, uh, we'll shoot you the, the digital and whatnot. So you can scan this and then it will send us a text message that sends an automation yep. with a link to sign up. So if you put in this promo code, Devin, <clears throat> then it's normally $70, but it takes down to 15 and then you can bring as many people as you want for free because our main motivation is to get this out to people. And if someone gets a ticket and they've made that um, mental sacrifice of committing, right? Because when all of a sudden there's a sacrifice of money, then you go through this mental checklist and you guys all understand this with you know, being this area of sales. Um, and so you can invite other people to come as well with you because we just want to get this to everyone. It, it, we we want to get this to the whole world, like into the school systems and helping people understand this on a deeper level to where they can shift their own life. Like they're going through life fulfilling themselves. And I would say that you guys do have other events. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to attend, if you're going to do something first, I would say a live session is way better than Zoom. Yeah. You know, because you can feel, you can just, agree. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Feel, feel the energy in the room. Sometimes the energy can be the people that are in there are low energy because mm -hmm. they're all trying to get better. Mm -hmm. But as you watch people get better, that's what's cool. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we love this idea of having this barbecue right after the event because you can talk to people who have been through the program and see the influence that it's had on their lives. Mm -hmm. You can connect with somebody who's struggling with really similar things as you, and because they've been through it and they've worked through that similar thought process, then you can link up and meet and say, hey, can you help me through the program? Mm -hmm. Or can you help me through this thing? Or make those connections, because as a community, it's so amazing to have mm -hmm. someone to bounce this off of. Because maybe that you're super gung-ho. <laughs> maybe you're super gung-ho about it, but like your spouse isn't. Right? And you would like them to do it, but maybe they don't. So by you having someone else to work through this with is an amazing opportunity. Go ahead, Tracy. <laughs> Sorry, I really <laughs> just interjected. <laughs> I just am wondering if you had any other events planned. Yeah, so if you scan this, which I did um, and I texted. Awesome. Okay. So if you click the link, it has like all our events there, oh, cool. right. but they're also posted for future events. Like we'll continue yeah. to update the website, the website. Okay. Um, of our future events as well. We usually do, so we usually go and speak at different conferences and then right after we'll have one of these events. And our next one is in May, it's May 11th, but it's in Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, and we might have another one in May as well. So you guys are speaking so. this weekend? No, we, we are. are. We are. Yeah. We are yeah, but this is the next closest bunch of fly that we have. So everyone from those conferences will be coming to this as well. Is your dad speaking? We're in Idaho. Because of Dan today. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much for being yeah. here. No, um, so did you guys do any kind of brain mapping or like, what do you, do you do anything like that? I'm down here. I'm just asking. What do you mean brain mapping? Well, I don't know. You were talking about how your dad. Did a clinic and they were scanning their brain. Oh yeah. So yeah. um at the neuro clinic, they were just doing like TMS and different oh. brain scans and things like that. We don't do any of that actual okay. physical part of it. Okay. We do um because what we actually discovered is the TMS, like reactivating those areas of the brain, you can do that through neuroplasticity. That's what you guys do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We're challenging beliefs and whatnot. Okay. And I, I'm glad it didn't end yet, but I do want to say one last thing, and that is um, anything financially, like we don't turn anybody away. Okay. Because we we understand people are in certain situations. Um, but that being said, from what we've seen in terms of numbers, whatnot, our programs are they're pretty cheap. It's 1500 bucks for an individual. So it's, it's really not bad at all. And that's a three month long program with 30 modules and three, five hour group sessions. And so that's like a on. facilitator to help walk yeah. through the process. So we, I will just throw that out there. Like, you know, the elephant in the room, this is not a crazy expensive program. Um, maybe one day we might increase prices because of whatever reason, but maybe not like but Flabby said, no. And Ashley are both facilitators. So if you were to go through this 
they could walk you in. I don't know how open you guys are to <laughs> how open your schedule is with different clients and things, but you can get someone to literally sit down with you and walk you through the process if there's any like kinks or things you want to figure out deeper. So that's a really amazing opportunity to to have somebody. And if you you know know someone, then it's it skyrockets the process. Hope on three. One, two, three. Oh. oh. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you guys so much. I have a question. Please. Great job, guys. We're in Idaho. Janet, you want to come up for a few minutes? I can help set that up. And then I've got a. Ashley, can you ask them where in Idaho? You guys talking at the expo? Good question. Ashley? Saturday at 2. Saturday at 2. We do have free tickets to go to that event. And we have they give us ten and if which event? Uh this weekend on Saturday. Okay, so that's how I learned about the last year. Be Health in Utah. Oh cool. Yeah. yeah. They want us to get rid of the tickets. I'll take these two. I just sent you a week. Yes. Did you get it? Hi guy. Hi. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, like, like right here. Okay, and Um, it's from Village Baker, and mm -hmm. it's that toast again. <laughs> it's like egg and avocado toast, like peanut butter. I know it sounds like crazy, but it's really good. And then um, the cinnamon rolls that one was oh. talking about. Oh no! They're so yummy. Anyway. For you guys, I'm Lay. I'm Janet Allen, and I'm with Factory Flooring Direct. And we just opened in Draper. So yeah. this is our second location. So I was in Oak Oh, awesome. So, yeah. So the I literally one, recognize you and I'm like, but that doesn't look like the name of the company. Right. So, so yeah, so we are just right here by Coles. So Sweet. we just got our occupancy. So now we're good. So we've been at awesome. Lake Point for um, 20 years. <laughs> and I've been in the business like 25 years. So we're going to be in this forever. And um, we just opened that, so I'm really excited. It's a design center, so it's very, it's just customized to feeling, just for clients. So anyway, so, okay, let's start. Shanna is amazing at customer service. She's on top of it. She's, I would say she um, is, yeah. yeah, no, I love working with her. Um, and she'd probably really like your program, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's she's like, 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 she and I are small. She and I are well. Okay, so what we are offering as a flooring store, we're a full fledged flooring store. So we do laminate, luxury vinyl plank, carpet, tile, everything, all of that. Um, install and material only. So if you're a do it yourself, you can do. We can sell material on the easy. Um, and then, or we can install. Uh, one nifty thing that we do is that our, we do restretch for life on carpet. So, okay. no That's cost nice. on that. And we're the only school that does that. Um, and then we also have blinds that we're selling as well blinds, shutters, roller shades. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's very nifty. So, I've got samples of all of those as well. Um, and we buy that direct, so we we measure, and then we have a free measure, free um, estimate, you know, all of that. None of that will cost you. So we are offering a realtor partner program, so that gives you a, the realtor twenty percent off your own home, and then it gives your clients ten percent, or if you have flips, we can do ten, you know, whatever. So um, and that is off the entire. So not just material, that's off of everything. So removal, trims, um, insulation, all of it. So it's that's a great value. So they'll also get me to help them. So you just send them my information, my cell phone, and then I meet with them, schedule the measure, walk them through the whole process, help them with their selections. So you get to just turn the client over and they get the treatment like you give them so that I'm their contact for everything for the install. So that's that deal. But the other thing that I am doing, if you register, and I'll send this, this is the little QR code to register. And if you register, which is free, doesn't cost, then um, I will send you a PDF of a coupon that you can market to, to your clients, kind of as a reminder, instead of just saying, 
I don't know what that goes to. I think that goes to our to so this. Yeah. So I'll put it's these. not opening up like oh it's not. Yeah, mine is easy. Yeah, it's not maybe working. I should put this one up there. Yeah, because yeah. this QR code is Yeah, because <laughs> we can really use that. That kind of thing to close your baskets or whatever. What? If, if we were doing a closing basket, we could actually put these coupons in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I will even print them for you if you want it. I'll just give you like a pack of twenty five. Yes. Okay. Um. So go ahead and scan this. How are you? <laughs> Go ahead and scan this and you just put in your name and information and then that will alert me and then I'll send you this PDF. Like I say, you can print it, you can send it in an email and what it says is it will have your name and then the real, realtor company and it will give the clients the 10% off or they can get 15 for material. But you can use it as a way to market, kind of to reach out to a, any, like your, say you have a list of 400 people I mean, how do you just call and say, hi, remember I'm a realtor, just let me know. Well, this gives you an opportunity to send something to them. Say, hey, I've got this coupon, just let me know, I'm still doing real estate. And, you know, it kind of gets you out there. The value is a yeah. really great idea. It's a huge right? value. Yeah. I think we're all in this together. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so that, that is that. Does anyone have any questions? We actually live in Weber County. We'll do it. I noticed that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, it, is Weber not on there? It's not. Oh, is Weber passed? On there? Not on there. Okay, so we will do it. We okay. just just let me know. We'll just make it work. Oh, cool. So this one kind of, you know, I just put it out there so that you not know, somebody from North Carolina isn't calling me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So, but yeah, we absolutely sure. can take care of it. Right. right. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and some people think even, oh, they probably don't do Park City. So it's like, okay, so I put that on there just so that, you know, that they can grasp that. But yes, we will take care of it. Oh, cool. So you call me direct. Great. Figure that out. It's a great program. It's, um, we've been doing this for a long time and the company is awesome to work for. And, of great installation warranties and all that stuff so it's really awesome uh, Anna and i referred some people in our neighborhood to jack and they were impressed with everything so well they highly uh, recommend they treat Thank you, you they tr you treat us like a customer which i'm getting used to not being treated like a customer anymore by a lot of businesses it's more like you know it's just kind of churn and burn type of thing <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah I, I appreciate you know the how hard they try to make us happy yeah i really liked it i really call it a vip experience because realtors are so vip and so on with their clients that i want them to feel this that i'm going to do the same thing for them and so that's been i think why i've been so successful in the business is because i just get that I get that you just take care of the customer. It's just do it. So, does anyone want any sticky notes? I have a oh, sticky notes. Too, right? <laughs> My card's on the back too. So, nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. Everybody grab some lunch. Yeah. Uh,